Hello folks. Hello, hello. Yes, I'm just here on the decorating bench. And uh, sort of not feeling very inspired, but sort of just trying to, you know, go through the motions as one does. <laughs> do you ever do that? Sometimes you just don't feel inspired, do you? But, you know, you just got to get out there and do it, sit down, look at your pots that you've got to maybe to decorate, like I have. And uh, I don't really seem to be getting any real inspired ideas. But, you know, things are happening. And I'm just doing right now some, um, some of these little tea bowls. So join me for that. So let me just drop this camera down a touch. So you just get a little bit more of a slightly more sideways angle on the proceedings, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm actually packing the kiln. I'm just, I've got sort of a bit of a, uh, quite a few oddments put it, putting it in. This pot here, which I was, I was doing earlier on and I just sort of, which is basically banded lines of iron oxide interspaced with some cobalt as you can see. And I just sort of uh, thought, right, okay, put that to one side and let's do, I've got one more here to do, which is a, uh, just a type of character tea bowl type. So I'm gonna just center him up here. And uh, yeah, I've got this iron oxide here. Iron oxide and, and red clay, actually. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, band a couple of lines. So we're going to band a broader line there, just down from the the lip, and then a and then a finer line underneath it. When you're doing this, incidentally. I want to rest your your arm as you hold the brush, you see, and then you can spin it. And um, so I'm spinning it from underneath, you see, with my, I'm spinning it like this. So it's going to put another line down there. Final one below it, like that. So, I'll just show you that. Okay, so you've got the the thick line and the thin line, and then a, th a thin uh, two at the bottom there. Okay. So what I'm going to do now with this one is. So I've got some cobalt here and I'm using one of these kind of brushes. Um, so both of these are cobalt, but the one on the right here is a lot more watery. You see? So I can take a bit of from a from that one over to this one to make it a bit stronger if I want to. So I just need to sort of mix this a bit here just to get it as I want it. All right. So what I'm going to do with this is, and you can have a go at this. It's not that difficult. I'm just going to do some, some broad background marks. Sort of like this, a little bit. Now be careful, you see what I did there. There was a little bit too much pigment and he's starting to run a bit. So. Dee, 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 dee. 
Okay, random like that. The sun is coming out like that. Now I'm just going to do some more underneath here. You just got to be a bit free about this, you know, to be too sort of. Do it fairly quickly. Okay, so we're getting that sort of effect. Okay, so now over here, with the iron oxide, what I'm going to do is You'll, you'll be surprised, you see, when you start doing something like this. Um, it comes together. It might, it might look a bit odd to start with when you're doing it, but... It's got to make it natural looking, you know. It hasn't got to be exact exact, it's just got to be... Always, you know, when you when you strike with the brush, don't hesitate. Just keep it, keep it going. And now you might ask, well, Simon, I don't know, what the what are those marks you're putting on there, Simon? Please give us an explanation. Well, I have none. They are marks. They mean whatever you want them to mean. They can be. Yeah, so you see, you see, you build up a a pattern. Now you need to sort of think in your mind's eye. Well, what's that going to look like when it's finished? Okay, so it's basically a white background with these iron oxide lines. Then the cobalt, so that's blue, bluish. It may be more blue or less blue, according to the strength that I have applied it. You see, you have to get to know that a little bit. I don't like it if it's too strong and I don't like it if it's wishy-washy, if you know what I mean. So you have to sort of strike a balance. And then these flecks on top of the blue. I think it'll, I think it'll work. Um, now I've done some, a different one. Here's some others over here. These are basically the, the same, you see, same idea. Uh, this one's a different one. Yeah, branch out, you see, do do something a little different. And um, yeah, another one of those guys. And then there's another one here, but this is only with the, the single fleck, you see. Maybe you have a favorite. Okay, so what I've got to do next is possibly this guy, or, or these, which I've now cleaned, these have been glazed, you see, these are a little bit of a fiddle because you've got to clean off all the glaze all the way around, around making sure that they, there's no glaze, you see that will cause them to stick together. All right. So that's that. Um, yeah, I've got a casserole dish here, which... Um, I've glazed that. Always when you... When you... Um, when you glaze, always leave a margin so that you don't, especially if you have a lid, you see, that you don't, there's nothing worse than having a nice casserole and you get it, get it out of the kiln and then you can't get the lid off. And then you break the lid in the process of trying to get it off. It's really a, a bad scene when that happens. 
So, there it is folks. I'm just going to make this a short clip. Um, and, um, yeah. Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, have a go at doing some brushwork, okay? All you need is some oxides. I basically use iron oxide and cobalt. I don't really use much else most of the time. And um, oh, there's a couple of pots down the end there I've just seen. I'll quickly show you. These are going into the kiln. And um, I may have shown you this one before. And this has now been bisque fired. The idea of this is, with this handle, okay, it's nice and easy to grab hold of. You can hold on to it like that, you see, and then pour, or like that, and pour. And when you've used them, how about some hooks on the wall? So it just hangs like that, you see, on the wall. That's that, and then there's this. I can't remember if I showed you this. This is a uh, a bowl, a simple bowl with two handles, which are impressed into the side there. I put a little bit of uh, with a roller these uh, impressions to give you something to grip there. And then a simple roll rolled around the outside. This will have wood ash sprayed on the outside, so will this one. Yeah. Okay mm -hmm. folks, just show you those two quickly. It's nice to, it's just good to see different things, isn't it? And just get different ideas. Um, we all need inspiration, don't we? <laughs> hey, go to my website, simonleachpottery.com and check that out. Yeah, we're getting some more pots up there. Here and there, so if there's something that takes your fancy, you, you might find it up there. Or pottery tools, throwing sticks and paddles and cut-off wires, etc. Hey, um, workshops, yes, we are. I've got a workshop this coming weekend, we've got about six people. In fact, the next three workshops, I think I've got about five or six people in each. And then after that, I'm fairly free. So. Hey, thanks for joining us. Keep practicing. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.